we have a new member in the YOLO family. We have YOLO V12. So in this video here, we're going to see how we can train it on a custom data set, run inference and so on. We're basically just going to go through a guide, a Google Colab notebook. We're going to talk about some of the new things with YOLO V12 and also compare it to the previous models. So let's just jump straight into it. I've jumped into the GitHub repo here for YOLO V12. This is not from Autolytics, but is it is based on Ultralytics. So still the same license, everything. You still can use it from the Ultralytics package and all that. If we scroll a bit further down, we can see we have these comparisons where we have the benchmark results on the Coco dataset. So if we're taking a look at it, we can see that this is actually like a new state of the art model. And just from the benchmark results here, it acts like looks significantly better compared to the other YOLO models. Let's compare it to V11 and V8, which is the one that I have the best performance on. So we can see just uh, compared with YOLO V8, both 11 and also 12 is significantly faster like significantly faster almost like two times faster running inference we get comparable results and so on but again we get a bit faster inference speed with the new yellow 12 model but again we also get a bit better accuracy there's one downside with the new model and for right now it acts like requires gpu because it has this attention centric real-time optic detector so it's using something called flash attention uh, which is actually like just a technique from the last language model and so on the attention mechanism where it basically just learns what to pay attention to in the image so right now it's only support on on gpu i'm not sure when it will be available on cpu but yeah again right now you can use it on gpu google colab and so on as we're going to run it through you can see the paper you can see they also have a hug and face space here it has some different updates. We're going to run through and use the RoboFlow uh, tutorial that we have right now. We're going to use a cotton data set and set up a whole pipeline. It will also be supported with Autolytics fairly soon. And then we can just use that directly out of the box from their framework. It's still based on the framework now, so it will still be the exact same thing. But if you just update it from Autolytics own repository, then it's not supported as we speak right now, but will be in the next few Days. We have the nano, small, medium, large, and extra large model, the exact same one as all the other YOLO models that we have. Here you can see the installation steps. You can also basically just go in and do the installation steps that I'm going to show you in a second. We can run validation, training, prediction, exported, and we also have a demo with an app from Gradio. So this is pretty much everything that I want to show you guys. Let's now jump inside a Google Colab notebook and get to do some real work. First of all here, you can use the fee GPU resources on Google Colab. Right now I'm using the guide from RoboFlow. Definitely check them out as well. They have the RoboFlow blog, GitHub repo, and then we also have the Google Colab notebook here. They read about, they basically just write about a lot of different stuff here with the description, what it is, what are the different comparisons and so on. They also compare it to other iterations where we have this window attention, crisscross attention, actual attention. So this is some new stuff coming into the YOLO V12 model that uses the attention mechanism. So it basically just has some mechanisms, some features that go in and learns, basically just as the human. So we pay attention to something like we're not looking at every single thing when we look with our eyes, we pay specific attention to specific things. So right now I'm looking into the camera. So my eyes are more focused or I pay more attention to the camera compared to to all the other things in my surroundings. So this is what you can go and read about. You can also read about the paper and so on. And we can see the graphs here as well. First of all, you can set up your RoboFlow API key. It's gonna be very easy once it's integrated into Autolytics and so on as well, but we need a GPU. If you go inside the runtime, you can change the runtime type and just use one of the free GPU resources from Google Colab. I've already put my API key in. If you go inside the API key tab here to the left, you can just put it in there and you can extract it in Google Colab in this way. I already ran a command here because I've running some, been running some tests and so on. You can just rerun here. We can run NVIDIA SMI. I'm also going to do a comparison where we're going to compare all the different versions. So V11, V12, V8 and so on, where we have them side by side to see if it actually like achieves better performance because one thing is the benchmark result we need to test out our models in real world situations different types of data sets and so on but RoboFlow is also very good for that right now we can then just import our home directory then we set up our dependencies so from the yolo we 12 github repo that we was just in we're going to just basically just pip install that going to use RoboFlow and also supervision for our annotations. The other thing here is flash attention. So we need this flash attention here, and this is why it's only 
working on the DPU for now, and it's used for accelerating attention-based computation via optimized CUDA kernel. So this is why it's running faster compared to the YOLO 11 model and the other ones as well. We pip install it, you just have to run this one here. We go in, get an example from Roflow with, uh, with the dog example. You guys have probably seen that before somewhere. So this is how we can run inference. So import CV2, from Autolytics we import YOLO. So everything is based on the Autolytics framework. So you can run the exact same commands, exact same arguments and so on. It's just a model that is swapped out. So it will also be available in Autolytics in no time. Right now, let's just run it. Let's see the results. So we get our results from our model. We do our inference. We take our predictions, convert them into um, supervision class. We have our box annotator, label annotator. We can copy our image, just our original image, and we annotate our bounding boxes and also our labels. Then we plot our image and we get our predictions here. So we have the person here, Peter from Rollflow, his popular dog here, handbag, backpack, and also a car here in the background. So it's really nice that it's picking up the car in the background as well. We get a handbag here. Probably because of like this, this one here wouldn't really say that that's a handbag, but again, we can also go in and use a confidence score threshold. Now we can go in and take a data set from the RoboFlow universe. I'm just going to open this one here. This is the example that they're using in the notebook. You can go in and use whatever. You can have your own projects as well. If you go inside your projects tab, label your custom data sets. I have whole pipelines, whole tutorials and so on covering how we can generate our own data set. How can we connect to a camera? How can we connect to a video? And then just extract frames from that. Then take those images, upload it into RoboFlow platform, do the annotations. They have a lot of different cool also annotation tools as well. I have a very popular video on that topic. So definitely check that out. If you don't want to do like manual labeling, we just throw in our data set, prompt what we want to detect in our image, and it's going to come up with the bounding boxes. So RoboFlow, very cool platform, setting up the whole computer vision pipeline. We can train our models in here, we can export, then we can do whatever, and then we can also use the inference SDK. So we have the whole computer vision pipeline. So we have a data set here. We can basically just go up and, and grab the, the URL and then download that model automatically. But let's now go inside the universe here. So I'll just gonna search for any project. We can also just go back here. So we go inside the RoboFlow app and we can go back into uh, the universe. So universe is down here at the bottom once you are at your main page. This is all the different projects that we have. If you want to do self-driving, gaming, manufacturing, agriculture, and also sports, you can search for specific projects up here to have tons of public available data sets that you can grab out of the box. Let's scroll down a bit here. I think this PCB holes is a pretty nice one. It has around like 100 images. We can go inside our data sets. We have already trained models, which is doing very good at solving this specific problem. If we go inside our data set, we just grab the URL. There we go. We go back into here. Need to export it into YOLO v8 format. Again, this is just Autolytics format. And then we're just gonna download the data set. This is how easy it is to pull any data set from the RoboFlow platform from the universe. You can also grab your own data set in the exact same way. So if you go over here to the left, we have our PCB holds for test, train, and validation split. And we also have our data YAML file. So let's see what classes we have. We basically just have one class, which is going to detect missing holds. Now we should have everything. We can just set our different path to our data YAML file, our test, train, and validation split. This is pretty much just everything that we have to do. Missing holes, so this is our data YAML file. Now we have everything, we can go in and train our models in the exact same way as any of the other YOLO versions. There we go. We have a model, we create an instance, YOLO v12 small. You can also just specify N, medium, large, and so on for pulling the different models. Let's just go in and use a, a small model. This is actually like going to, um, this is actually like going to change this is actually like going to, to, to train them from scratch, but you can replace them by any model here. So this is if you want to just, if you have a very large data set and you want to train your own custom models with random initialized weights, we can do it this way here, but we just want to fine tune an already pre-trained model. So the pre-trained model was how we was running inference up here at the top. So now you can just go in and hit start train. If you want to run inference, you can do it in the exact same way here. I'm just going to grab the code snippet. 
there we go we can pull in a new model and then instead of train we can just call predict we can throw in a video so this is what i did before I just did some runs so i can go in and do comparisons of yolo, yolo 11 yolo v12 on different videos so predict here we can just specify um our road so we copy a path there we go we can specify that we want to save it we set save set that equal to true and then it's going to save a video file so while it's actually like training here we can see that now we get some different predictions epoch 1 to epoch 100 so we're training for 100 epochs this is probably a bit too much let's just cancel it and only go for 50 epochs because we only have 100 images in this data set there we go while it's training here let, let's grab up some videos that i just ran through so i have this example here this is a video covering the yolo 11 model or the 12 the new 12 model and this is the nano version of it then also did the exact same thing with the yolo 11 model and we can just run the results here on the sideline so just initially it looks very similar when i'm looking at the cars maybe we get some more detections from the 11 model but again it should run faster with optimized CUDA kernels for different GPUs and so on. The good thing about the other YOLO models is that they run on CPU directly out of the box. Yeah, I think it's it's very similar results here, at least for the nano models. I was also running through the, the medium model just to see if we get more predictions. So this one here is the YOLO 11 model. Let's grab this one. This is the YOLO 11 model. Now we start to get some cars up here in the background and also a bit further away. So once they start to come around this region here and this region, we actually have detections with the nano model or this is the medium model. Let me close all these and let's grab the last one here, which is the new 12 model with medium size. So I think the medium size, it's, it's definitely better with the YOLO 11 model, definitely. And even like YOLO V8 might be better than YOLO V11, uh, at least on smaller objects. So just initially here might be that it's a bit faster, but just because we have a new version in the YOLO family doesn't mean that that's the best model, especially like if they just run it on the benchmarks because it depends on the TPUs that they're using, the CUDA versions and all that because they're using this flash tension which is optimized for CUDA kernels. So I'm not really seeing better results with the new YOLO V12 model. Let's see, we're probably going to do a pretty good job on the training because it's a relative easy data set but make sure that you test out your data, you test out your projects on various different models. Just from the initial results that I'm seeing here, because we, we can't use like CPU, it doesn't look as good with the larger models. I, th I think the YOLO 11 and the YOLO V8 model is still is still like better compared to this one here. I have to play around with it like way more, use it for different projects, different use cases and so on. But initially here, we might get some speed ups um, I've been running some different speed ups, maybe need some more optimization and so on, but I'm not really seeing it's that much faster compared to the YOLO 11 model. So we'll see in the future when I get to run more tests, but this is how you can train the model. And it's very important that you train it. It's so easy to train, like it's just a single line of code. And if you want to train it on a YOLO 11 model, we basically just copy paste the exact same thing, paste it in here, we change it. This is only called YOLO 11. We have a small model. You can run it here and then you can run like three different models you go grab a coffee probably more than one coffee because it will probably take an hour or something like that so you can grab a few coffees you can come back and then you have trained a uh, trained uh, a ton of different models basically so that's very important now it's done training we get our evaluation so precision recall pretty much one mean error precision is also pretty much one so this is almost like a perfect model very good to use directly out of the box so now we can also go in and do evaluation. Could be that we have more classes and so on, then it makes sense to go in and look at the confusion matrix. So it's not gonna like create one for that right now. If we go inside our run folder, or it is. The reason why I got it is because I have like train two. We didn't finish the first training, we converted it to uh, epoch uh, 50 or 50 epochs. So yeah, this is our results. We get our train, we get our train two. If you want to grab the custom model of your train, we just go in here, right click, download the best.pt model, and you can use it in your own custom Python script, application, and project. We have our results, PNG as always. We can see the training metrics, so the recall precision, how it's going up over the number of epochs, and we can see here that it's pretty much enough with 
fifth epoch some of the losses are still going down but the precision recall meaner position and so on is pretty much perfect so this is very important to run through i'll just run through it here if you use the colab notebook it'll be down in the description so you can just grab it run these blocks of code and you can create like a computer vision model use Roboflow for setting up the whole pipeline the data and so on you don't really need to write any code it's just copy paste and run through some commands now we have computer vision we have missing hole let's go in and grab the best trained model so train to there we go you can see the mean average positions pretty much perfect we can also plot it directly when we are using um supervision metrics so this is very good if you're creating report if you're a student if you're a researcher and so on supervision i guess it's very good for visualizations plotting graphics and all that now we can run inference with the best machine model again i need to change it out here you can also just if you download to your own local machine just drop it into your directory and you can just specify the relative path as well there we go and now let's just run through some examples we have a missing hole here detected perfectly but again we also expect that with the model results that we are seeing so this is how easy it is again we can just run it again because it's going to grab a random image or at least it should yeah it is so yeah we're basically just running through random images here and detecting missing holes here we have two missing holes in our pcb soldering this is how easy it is to use the new yolo v12 model it's a new family member but again it's just as easy training any of the other models if not easier because you can use cpu you don't have all these different things that you need to take into account just wanted to cover this new video here gonna cover it more we need to test it on some more real world examples see how does it act like work is it better than yolo 11 just because we have a new version doesn't just it's not just equal to a better model even if it's showing it on the benchmark results sometimes i'm seeing like very good benchmark results but when you get it into run in real world projects it doesn't even get anywhere near those results hope you learned a ton this video here definitely going to check it out we'll have it available with ultralytics you can use roboflow very cool platform to have the hole in there i'm creating a bunch of tutorials covering both platforms as well this is what you need if you're a computer vision engineer or not even a computer vision engineer if you just want to create computer vision projects do detections with cameras, videos, and so on. Hope you learned a ton. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.